Well, I brought my saxophone with me. First of all, I wanted to play for you. I wanted you to have fun. But uh, secondly, also, I wanted to somehow give evidence how close the art is with creating a better world. I, I believe beauty and art can help us, in addition, of course, to being smart politicians, smart scholars, smart activists in civil society. And uh, I thought it would be interesting for you to see uh, how one can um, combine uh, a powerful uh, international movement uh, with uh, improving the world. So this is why I'm here for you today. I want to talk to you about basically three things. One is, I believe that um, one can, by empowering civil society, by creating a strong link between civil society organizations, government, and the private sector, one creates tremendous solutions for many um, issues which are um, uh, presently plaguing the world. Secondly, I believe that beauty can help us to find this better world we want to live in, a more just world, a world in which we all uh, can um, share the benefits of this world. And thirdly, of course, I uh, wanted to simply be with you. Be with you here in Bangladesh, which is one of the most exciting places in the world, in which, <laughs> in which of course, you see um, at the same time the highest level of uh, spiritual values and strength, but also a tremendous uh, amount of deprivation and poverty and suffering. So it is with this in mind that I thought I'd bring my little saxophone with you and simply play a few tones in order to get you into this mood. Very few tones, so don't be afraid. <laughs> I, to do this by uh, talking about three examples of where I find uh, one can really help um, society, help the people, help in particular poor people to improve their lives. The first example is um, uh, Transparency International. Transparency International is an organization which has been created about 20 years ago by an interaction between civil society, government, and uh, the private sector, and has in many ways uh, been able to change what used to be a disastrous, a scandalous system in the world in which corruption and uh, uh, exploitation has become uh, the norm. And um, I think when Transparency International started to do its work, it uh, became an example on how civil society can change the world if it focuses on uh, the right things. I would like to bring you an example of what has happened, for instance, in the interaction of Transparency International uh, everywhere in the world um, uh, to stop corruption. Uh, we started out in Kenya at a time when I was the director of the World Bank office in Kenya, when everybody felt that corruption was absolutely necessary in order to do business. In particular, the companies from the north who were trying to sell their wares in, uh, in Kenya, they bribed right and left, they perverted decision-making in the countries, they created tremendous distortions, focusing government expenditures on huge mega-projects which cost hundreds and millions of uh, dollars, and uh, neglecting basically the poor neglecting small expenditures, which would have been possible to change the lives of thousands and thousands of people. So this is uh, where we began our work, and uh, we basically concentrated on three areas, on three um, concepts. One concept was that we wanted to 
um, make sure that the people understand what corruption means in their country and that they get together in order to organize themselves to fight corruption. The second was that we tried to empower people to understand what was happening in their country and to form coalitions among themselves in order to jointly try to find uh, other uh, possibilities uh, to avoid uh, corruption and the destruction of, the, of their societies. And of course, the third point had uh, to do with um, empowering people uh, to understand that they can work without corruption in their societies. The issue which for us was most important at the time, that uh, apparently most of the companies coming from outside Africa, for instance, from outside Asia, from outside Latin America, they had developed a system where they felt corruption was necessary. That corruption was something which uh, they couldn't stop and therefore they had to participate. And um, I want to give you an example on how we were able to avoid this uh, through a system uh, which we developed at the time in Germany. We basically uh, got together the companies which were doing a lot of business internationally. We convinced them that their quality of products, their pricing, their offer uh, of um, solutions everywhere in the world uh, could compete and they wouldn't have to uh, deal through corruption with local decision makers. And to our great delight, quite a number of companies believed us and they helped us to organize uh, what we called um, later uh, coalitions of the honest and um, what we introduced as integrity pacts in many parts of the world. And out of this integrity pact eventually grew a coalition which uh, tried to, through collective action, stop bribery everywhere um, at the same time so that nobody would be punished for being honest. And this is exactly what happened in Germany at the time. And in fact, it led to a international convention uh, under the auspices of the OECD in which all the companies of the rich countries agreed to stop bribing and therefore um, keep a level playing field but at an honest level. So this was a tremendous uh, success and I must say I'm very proud that we managed to point this out to the decision makers in civil society, in business, in government, in the private sector and therefore uh, we, made, we were able to make a, a quite a difference. I want to give another example of this kind of uh, coalition of, uh, for, the, for the betterment of um, uh, society. Uh, that other example has to do with um, the extractive industries, with mining, with oil and gas and fisheries and uh, forestry, where we also saw that there was a tremendous amount of corruption going on and therefore uh, the local people very often got very little uh, of the benefits of uh, the exploitation of their natural resources. Again, it was able to create a coalition among these three actors. We call this somehow the magical triangle of uh, better governance, in which civil society, governments and the private sector, in particular in oil and gas, but also in other natural resources, got together to agree on avoiding corruption, agreed on uh, trying to um, go forward on the basis of honesty and openness. And this is exactly what has happened by now, about 40 countries have joined the Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative, which uh, to our great delight uh, is now uh, beginning to make an impact and trying to undermine the uh, corrupt practices which were customary in oil and gas and mining and so on. Now this kind of approach in mobilizing civil society to cooperate with the business community, to cooperate with governments, uh, to cooperate with each other has tremendous potential and therefore we are right now again very happily proposing a third initiative and that initiative has uh, a lot to do with Bangladesh because it is an attempt to create more honesty and more openness in the textile sector. It has uh, the potential to make sure that uh, if the various producing countries in the textile industry about 20 of them are probably um, responsible for a huge amount of uh, production of 
uh, of uh, clothing and so on everywhere in the world, they get together in order to raise together the level of honesty, of transparency in this sector and thereby um, make sure that uh, much more of the added value remains in countries like Bangladesh, uh, like uh, Myanmar, like um, uh, even in Africa, for instance, in Ethiopia, uh, in countries where, again, uh, a lot of um, exploitation and uh, loan dumping and so on is taking place. Now, I'm very happy to say that this is making great progress. Also here in Bangladesh, we have been very happy to uh, interact closely with uh, the various actors in your textile sector, so that hopefully also in the future there's more security, that um, accidents and catastrophes like uh, the Rana Plaza uh, event don't uh, happen again in, in this country. So this is uh, what we are trying to do, creating coalitions for better governance, creating coalitions uh, against corruption, creating coalitions between civil society the private sector and, of course, um, uh, the, the public sector. Uh, and I include in the public sector not only the national governments, but also uh, the international organizations, which are normally driven by the wishes very often at the lowest common denominator of uh, their member countries. Now, this is what we are doing. And I think uh, what this helps us to achieve is uh, not only a system of more benefits at a higher level to the producing countries and textiles, for instance. Uh, it helps us to um, prevent sort of uh, dumping uh, of uh, uh, competition in the international world because also, I should say, many of the uh, companies which are importing uh, textiles, for instance, from Bangladesh, they are ashamed of what is happening uh, when there are accidents and hundreds, sometimes thousands of people lose their lives. So this is what we are doing right now. We are trying to mobilize civil society. We are trying to bring them together with uh, the business community and at the same time uh, have a, uh, a government, strong government representation, sort of a magical triangle of these three actors in order to improve um, the, the work in this sector. And we are making progress in a very proud to report to you that this is exactly what we hope to achieve also here in Bangladesh. What can we learn from this? I think there are very important lessons for business because they have to learn to live up to more openness, to more honesty, to more generosity. They have to live up to a legal system which is transparent and um, therefore uh, can be trusted to become a partner of society. But also civil society has to live up to a role in which they can be uh, honest partners of business and the government in order to keep them um, honest, in order to keep them to their standards, in order to keep them um, in many ways um, to uh, a open and safe contribution to the economy, to the society. Unfortunately, uh, civil society itself also has to learn. Civil society very often is not very transparent itself. Very often you don't really know who is behind uh, certain uh, forces in, in uh, non-governmental organizations. Uh, civil society itself has to become more transparent. Civil society has to become more professional. In many ways, international 
campaigns have been run worldwide, and afterwards civil society had to recognize that they did indeed make tremendous mistakes. Uh, uh, I remind you of the Brent Spar campaign, where afterwards many people felt that it would just have been as good if one would have simply sunk Brent Spar rather than uh, cutting it into pieces and bringing it to the land to, to, uh, to deal with it there. Civil society has to become more professional. And civil society has to learn to work with these other two actors in a, uh, what, what one can call an antagonistic uh, cooperation. They have to protect their independence. They have to protect, um, uh, on the other hand, uh, themselves from being too hostile and too antagonistic. So in many ways, in many areas, it is possible to have a close interaction uh, between government, civil society, and the private sector. And of course, governments should welcome this. Governments should not um, destroy civil society by issuing laws like uh, they have done now in Russia, or they have done in Ethiopia, or they have done in a number of countries where they basically stifle the uh, activities of civil society. But if these two uh, partners, together with the private sector, begin to interact in an um, independent, possibly sometimes antagonistic way, and uh, begin to uh, develop tremendous professionalism, which you find in many civil society organizations, including labor unions and including professional organizations. Then I think out of this interaction, uh, we can expect to develop a world which is more fair, which is more just, which can avoid um, huge accidents like uh, Rana Plaza, but which can also um, help everybody uh, to look into a more sustainable future um, with a tremendous uh, confidence. So this is what I hope. Thank <laughs> you.